there's me and if you can have a control of that. No, 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 no. You have to? Yeah. The order. All right, this is the, this is the virus. Uh, look like under the electron microscope or projections from various components. One thing common in all viruses, subhanAllah, is that they are not living bodies like bacteria, like any other life form. They are not living. They don't multiply outside the body. They are just main part of this structure is a message in it which has the message for the cell that when it enters into the cell, it hijacks the cell machine and produces its own copies. That's it. So the main part of the, any virus, and this coronavirus is not an exception, is, has, it has a message in it which hijacks the cell which it attacks and ask the cell to produce its copies. When the lot of copies are produced, cell normally functioning other ways become unwell. And unwell cells are attacked by our own immune system. And so many cells are attacked by our own immune system, we feel unwell. We become ill. And that's how this happens. This particular virus attacks the lungs the cells in the lungs. And when it goes there, it asks the cells to make its copies. And when the copies are made, the cells become unwell. They are not performing their normal functions. Hence, they are, they are attacked by immune system. And the lungs become a, a mass of inflammation of various things. If it doesn't function, we feel unwell. We get pneumonia. That's how it works. And at the same time, when we feel unwell, we have the coughs and sneezes and the rest. With, with, with the cough and with the sneezes, the virus is shed in the droplets that we produce. But I'll come back to that in a minute. So that's the virus. Uh, the computer's got the virus. <laughs> <laughs> What should I do? No, okay. Yeah. Okay, that's this one. Okay. Thank you very much. So the history is that in 2002 and 3, there was first crossover. What happens is we have our own coronaviruses. There are three or four coronaviruses which infect humans. Normally, you get mild to moderate infection, cold symptoms. There are about 200 types of viruses which can which which we can acquire from each other and which cause mild to moderate uh, uh, symptoms or flu-like symptoms or cold symptoms. The top of which is done by flu virus, influenza virus, which causes a more serious illness. And of those 200, there are two or three or four which are human viruses. And these three examples are when the viruses belong to something else, some other species. <laughs> And, and um, oh, I lost the uh, screen. How do you get back? Not next, but this one. Yes. <coughs> so these examples are when they cross the species. The first case was some cats uh, having coronavirus and they jumped the species and came into humans. That was in China again in 2002 and three. And then it happened again when the virus belonging to the camel crossed the species, jumped the species and came to infect humans in 2012. So we called it MERS, it was very well known that this infection affecting the pilgrim, pilgrims of Hajj and Umrah in the Middle East. So that was the second occasion when the coronavirus jumped the species. Now this is the third time, again from China, and the, the, um, and the predictions are, the story goes to a fish market where there were a lot of livestock uh, and people dealing with it and people frequently visiting the market 
they were the one who caught it. So this is the kind of story which is building up and still under the investigation. Which particular uh, uh, zoonotic or animal or, 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 or non-human source was involved. But it was non-human. So the coronavirus that we normally get, this is not one of those. This is novel. This is what we, the whole mankind doesn't know about it. What happens is if we knew some viruses, some of us get immune system active against it. So all of us don't have to get the infection. But this particular virus, none of us knows. Our immune system are totally naive. And anybody who, can, who gets it is likely to get the infection. Although there are some, some people who may not because of other reasons which are complicated. But that's the history. Um, here I mention um, the first principle of infection control and prevention, narrated by what said Bukhari and Muslim from the Prophet, peace be upon him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is one of the, this statement must make one of the two central pillars of modern infection prevention and control. The second being the vaccination. This is it. This, is, this says at that, those times the plague was the most important uh, epidemic disease. And Prophet had said, or had been reported to have said, that if you hear about an area hit by plague, don't go there. And if you are caught up in that area, don't leave it until it is settled. So this is what this is it. This is the infection control and prevention, and and this should apply to cities, to towns, to villages, to small areas, to families, even to a person. As our Imam said a few minutes ago, that if somebody is, is having symptoms, they should refrain from coming to a congregation. So this is it. That's the extrapolation of this statement that we want to contain it within whatever boundary we identify, within whatever boundary we can contain. So if we, if we go somewhere meeting somebody who is infected, we should take precautions. Better abstain, but if not, then take precautions. And if we ourselves, any one of us unfortunately is, is symptomatic, then we would take every step to, to stop it spreading to other people. This is our, our duty. We are obligated to, to perform that way. It was so much more difficult a few weeks ago to say the statement which our Imam made today that don't come to the mosque if you are symptomatic. So stopping people coming to mosque was very, very, very big agenda. It was very heavy to say. But you see, today there was no sound of cough or sneeze. But normally, you know, people don't care. But now the fear has driven, uh, fear has driven into us thinking those kind of terms. So this is again the central pillar of the infection prevention of control, uh, the saying of our Prophet Now if you didn't do that, then the disease which started from Wuhan in China, this is the map of the China, and the, and the orange is the area where the disease started. It spread to the rest of the country and crossed the boundaries of the country, came to Korea, and then to Italy and the rest of the world. We know the story, the rest of the history. It has gone everywhere. So uh, probably because the common cold is so common, people didn't realize that it was something which was, uh, which was happening as a, because of a corona, new novel virus, coronavirus. So th they took it sort of as a, as a normal flu virus or some kind of unrecognized virus infection. But, but at some stage, uh, somebody uh, tried to try to investigate it. Again, in the labs, we ask the question: if influenza is present or not, if uh, if uh, rhinovirus is present or not, if another virus is present or not, we don't ask the question which virus is present, because the technology doesn't allow us. So you have to take another step to find out if there was a virus involved in that this was a new infection. So somebody very cleverly found out that this is actually not one of those viruses which the mankind knew before, but this is the new ones. Hence, they took this step and then the rest we know what happened so far. Uh, it's going to go crazy, uh, it seems like. 
Now, the, I, I, these, are the, these are the symptoms which we normally are aware of uh, with, from any cold. So you get uh, a fever, you get chest pain, you get chills, you get rapid respiration, you get uh, cough, you get sneeze, and you get pneumonia, and you get uh, uh, the, the, other, the other things, the sore throat and the rest, we are all aware. It's not different, except coronavirus has been, initially we thought it might be just like a flu, but it's slightly more symptomatic than that, and the attack rate is more. So if, if people get, say 100 people get it, more people are likely to get more symptomatic, and seriously more symptomatic than with the flu. So it's slightly more. So more people end up in the hospital. So it's, it's, it's more serious than flu, but it's not absolutely more serious. So there's no scare, but definitely it's more serious uh, than the flu as far as so far the projections and the stories are Concerned. But if people say what we know is the tip of the iceberg, it's not tip of the iceberg. We have inside, people have visited China from WHO and they confirm that the, the death rate is about 1%, which is quite high to be honest. But it's not something uh, all or none situation. It's, it's like many people are getting, getting better and with, with any disease when the system sorts it out itself. Unless Pantara put it this way, that the system sort out itself slowly, slowly, given the time, given the support. So this is it. Then, based on the available data, the three points how it spreads. There is a contact, and there is a droplet, and there is fomite. I will explain to you each one of them. The contact, close contact, the droplets, and the fomites. What is the, what is the um, uh, first of all, the um, the contact is very, very clear. It's like handshake, like hugging, like uh, you know, having, having infected person, having direct contact with the infected person. I'll explain to you. But about the airborne and about the droplets, when people sneeze, or people cough, or people speak even, they shed bacteria and viruses. The viruses are present, but they definitely shed bacteria. Now after. They, they shed bacteria and droplets which come with the sneeze or with the, with the cough. And the droplets tend to settle down. Hence, with it goes the bacteria and the viruses. Um, but sometimes the bacteria, even in dry situation, they remain suspended in the air. That's called airborne. That's called airborne. If the bacteria remain suspending, suspended in the air after a long time, that's called airborne. This virus is not airborne. This is this virus is not airborne. This is this is again with droplets, and droplets uh, either dry up or they settle on the floor. But for us, uh, this is a famous uh, uh, conceptual slide of somebody has sneezed, and how much bacteria are shed. You can look at um, the, the the condensation a sneeze can cause, and you don't want to be on the way of this. You don't. And I will tell you how you can avoid it, but you don't want to be caught up in this one. This is this is massive dose. So, but additionally, the Muslim, uh, we talk about the congregation, and we talk about the mass gathering. For Muslims, we are additional challenge, because even if it settles down, it settles down the carpet. And we worship, or we put our nose directly on the place. So this is very important that this is the time for us to think in a slightly better way for the mosque committees and for there's no study I could find which have looked at the mosque carpet contamination rate. There's no study. It's a, it's a taboo to talk about the Muslim worship uh, places being infected. I mean, only recently we learned some lessons from the Hajj that the pilgrims need to be vaccinated against the meningococcus. Hence the meningococcus vaccination become compulsory. Uh, but there are things, I mean, all of us know that going to Haram uh, is, is, is not something you can come back without having respiratory infection. So the people who organize the things have the responsibility to ensure, as they ensure the safety of people, 
they should ensure the safety of their health as well. And they, this ensure the supplies. The, the, the supplies should be enough. The water should be there. They should they ensure that they are safe. There is no crime. They do everything. Except why don't they do they, to the, about their health? Why we have carpets? We can't clean them. Long pile carpets, very soft, nice on the feet, very cozy, you know, very cozy environment. But who can clean them of infections? This is this is what we need to think in future now. Oh, which mosque has many sanitizers? Many sanitizers. Which mosque has? Which other mosque has or a good air air exchange um, air exchange facility? Or which uh, we have additional problem. It's not a Hindu mandir, where or or or, 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 a, or a Christian place where people go and sit on chairs, come back. We sit on the floor and put our nose there. And this has to be. I'm very sorry. This has to be. Uh, uh, this has to be um, taken care of. So, uh, uh, applying the rules of uh, droplet infection, or uh, or uh, uh, from avoiding avoiding to come into contact with somebody who is coughing a sneeze, is not enough for us in this atmosphere. It's also important the surface we we worship on is clean and tidy as well, or cleanable as well. So, uh, so the basic thing is the rule is catch it, bin it, and kill it. How we catch it? We either uh, are sneezing. The person is sneezing. They should do two things. They should either use uh, the tissues to cover their face and their nose and the mouth to to, to spread to prevent it spreading, or if they don't have time or the tissue in the pocket at least they should use their elbow to cover it. So it's, it's, it's right on the elbow, not spreading around on the people. <coughs> so this is rule number one. And then if you have to use the tissue, immediately bin it. And then you have the duty to wash your hand because the tissue is infected. If you have used your elbow, the first duty is not to, not to have handshake or or have hugging somebody and then spreading infection. Try to, on first opportunity, to try to clean, this, to clean the place, clean the clothes, change the clothes and wash them. So this is our duty. We have to do these things now. There are so many more infections. Why are we are worried, worried about this? Why not about flu virus? Why should people be uh, coming to the mosque and coughing around and sneezing without regard to the neighboring worshipper? Why should we do that? It should be the change in, that's why I put in my talk, as a lifestyle change. We have to accept these, the mosque committee have to accept that they use the surfaces in the floor which are cleanable and which, which actually should impact on the way we worship, not just, this is the opportunity to learn that. So uh, this, is a, this is it, and the close contact with the confirmed case means living with somebody. You remember I spoke about contact, this is the contact living with somebody in the house or, 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 or contacting their body fluids or face-to-face -face contact. This virus, a particular virus, has been reported to have shed in the urine and feces as well, in the blood as well. So it's quite uh, quite nasty, widespread virus infection. So it's everywhere, not only in the, in, in the, in the, in, in the cough material or sneeze material. And, and being with the infected person within two meters, so if somebody is infected and they are talking, they don't have to sneeze or cough. Within two meters, it can infect. So what is fomites? Fomites is any object which, is, which can transmit disease. So in the home, uh, the do door handles and toys and juice towels. In public could be door handles in public buildings. Uh, uh, there is armrest and support bars in the public transport, trolleys and baskets in supermarket and currency notes, and some people have the habit of licking them while counting, this is not good. And then the chewing objects like pencils and pens, I've seen many people chewing their pencils even in the hospital environment, which is not good. And open foods which are, which are, which can't be cooked or washed or, or uh, peeled, they are potential sources of infection. 
Some of these things you hear, some of these things you might not hear. But this is just for information. Uh, and then, this is the most important slide. If I, if I came here for one slide, this is the one. And as I explained to you, what are the, what are the four miles? What are the things which can be infected? Please keep that in mind. And the most important thing is, the hand is the most important part of the body which transmits the disease. Hand is the most important part. Uh, if they are visibly dirty, we need to clean them with water and soap. Water on its own is not sufficient. We need to clean them with water and soap. If hands are not dirty, then sanitizers on its own can help. Cleaning hand or sanitizing them off and on is a good practice. Even before, even you are not suspecting, it's a good idea to sanitize, clean your hands. Some of these sanitizers have alcohol. There are some available, probably not these days, which are alcohol free if somebody feels about it. Some of these sanitizers can damage your hands, so that you need conditioners and things. So these are all things, but cleaning hand is the central idea of infection control and management. And then, uh, if you meet somebody who has symptoms, keep the social distance, talking. So if you are talking to somebody from, from outside a meter, that's okay. Getting too close is not okay. So if somebody is coughing and sneezing, two meters is important, but somebody is talking, one meter is important. And if you uh, have infected articles and fomite, avoid touching your eyes. If you have touched something, even you know if after sajda, you, you're not sure if the carpet was clean, don't rub your eyes or nose with that hand until it is sanitized. I just noticed after the prayer, somebody was rubbing their eyes properly. Eyes could be a source of entry of this virus and any other virus into the body. The eyes could be the source. Mouth, nose and eyes could be the source. So people think about nose and mouth, people don't think about eyes. Eyes can be the source of infection. And un until they are washed or they are sanitized, you are not using going to use your hand to rub your eyes or, or, or touch your nose or put, put hand in some form of way into the mouth and until the hands are washed. Now, this is the most important piece of information. If somebody sneezes or coughs and you are not warned about it, you immediately close your eyes and hold your breath and move away. <coughs> Three things. Close your eyes, hold your breath and move away. Close your eyes, hold your breath and move away. So you're not going to let these droplets enter to your system. Try to minimize the entry. You can't prevent anything 100%, but you can, and you can minimize. And this is the most important bit with which you can minimize the entry of the virus into your system. Close your eyes, hold your breath as long as you can, and move away. You're not going to apply this to your kids because they should. You can't. You can't. But to yourself, um, do this, please. Move away. And I have shown you the slide with, with, with somebody sneezes and how much a hollow of a droplet, a cloud of droplet is created. You don't want to breathe into that. So you want to move away. And move away when your eyes are closed and you are you're holding your breath as long as you can. So this is it. And then. Uh, uh, you should uh, you should a cough or sneeze into the piece of tissue and immediately dispose it off and clean your hands and if you don't have it bend your elbows at least and use your bent elbow at least and if you have symptom you don't come into congregation you have any question no if you have symptoms don't come into congregation so this this was the advice given by our imam as well. So I'm not saying outside something which is which was not acceptable a few weeks ago, but now it's widely said. The Halman Sheikh has been closed because of this. The prayers have been shortened. The khutbas have been shortened. 
but this is not enough. We need to look at the at the way we worship, as I said, you know, the way we floor our uh, flooring and things and the air exchanges and the carpets and the rest. Now, this is important that if somebody comes from abroad, they need to report, and they need to report. Now, they were they were they listed countries uh, in PHE. If you look at PHE, coronavirus advice, they list the countries with A category. And they also list the country with B category. But now, things are getting beyond control. I mean, if you transit in an airport outside those categories, you might jump, bump up into somebody who has got the infection. So the most important thing is that if you recognize that you're having some symptoms, take advice. So GP111 and other medical professionals and medical websites they can give you the advice. And these are the lists of the countries. It was collected a few days ago. This might change. It might subject to change. But mostly, this is what it is. The category A country, you, you must quarantine yourself. And category B country, you wait for the symptom before you apply quarantine and, and self-isolation. You remember? Prophet Sallallahu said, if you have symptoms, if you are caught up in a symptomatic area, you stay there. Now extrapolate that advice to yourself. If you have symptoms, stay away from the rest of people. Now this is about the care of the family members. This can be very, very complicated. So I've just added it to, to, to complete the case. But otherwise you need more advice about how to care about a family member who is, who is involved. And at the same time you want to protect yourself. It's very difficult to, to, to do, but it's possible, and that's why the advice. So this is it, and then there were some more questions, uh, 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 and then you need to call, if you think you have been in contact with somebody, take advice or go to online, and, and uh, the uh, I, last night I was hearing that even the Prime Minister was saying the 111 is overwhelmed. So take advice online. So things are getting from bad to slightly worse. Uh, uh, and then the general advice at the moment is, as we hear that uh, congregations are you know, smarter in time and the number of people um, gathering together has been limited, but generally the advice is don't um, suspend your life. You know, it's not something which you need to, I, I mean, you might have noticed the, uh, the shelves and supermarkets are emptied and people are storing stuff, uh, which is an uh, which is, which is, uh, indicator of panic. So we don't need to create panic. We need to calm and quiet and make, make deliberate actions to prevent us getting the infection. And then, uh, uh, otherwise, we need to carry on doing our normal life. And there's no evidence that the letters or parcels can uh, pass on the infection. The cooked food doesn't pass on the infection. And the animal and pets so far, there's no evidence that we can pass on this infection to them or they can pass on their infection to us. Although in this particular case, it was the animal coronavirus, but that doesn't happen on a regular basis. And uh, so, uh, so that's it. I mean, I can take more questions. Uh, uh, th this is this is particularly about <coughs> us. The congregation is a sensitive issue, and the mosque uh, microbiological studies are actually lacking. We need to to do that, and uh, uh, some success stories from the Hajj and Umrah, and we need to take actions against the respiratory viruses. And I have highlighted some of the stuff which we need to do for the mosque immediately we can install some hand sanitizers on regular places and we should have education as today it was very nice we need to have educational components in khutbah as a regular presence which is very important uh, and uh, as, as said that there is a cough and sneeze etiquettes and we need to do that and please don't mind if uh, people offer handshake and, and you don't offer your hand for shaking and don't do it. We're not going to do it until things are sorted. So it's not a must. We, we love each other despite. And, 
uh, and so these are the things which you need to change in our lifestyle. Hope it was okay, and I'm happy to take any question if there is. Um, inshallah, we're going to open the floor for questions. Um, I'll be pulling a link down for anyone who wants to provide anonymized questions of any of the sisters who don't want to shout out. Um, but otherwise, um, if you want to shout out, you have a question now, inshallah, Dr. Oqad will be accepting questions, inshallah. Okay. Does anyone here have a question? Any questions? Yeah. Uh, is, is there any particular temperature where this virus might not survive? What the virus? A particular temperature where this virus might not uh, spread. Uh, temperature okay. where the virus, for example, in places like Africa, yeah. where the temperature is yeah. very high. I think the, 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 the thing is that drying of the droplets, as soon as the droplet dies, the virus is dead. So the droplet dies quicker or, or dries quicker in high temperature. Okay, but if you are caught up in a in somebody's directly without giving the chance for the heat in the atmosphere to dry it out, then there's a chance to get the virus. But yes, the hot temperature affects the virus infection, hence you get more virus infections in colder months than in summer months. Any other question? Okay. Yes. Yes. Please, yes. Uh, you said about the transmission of infection when someone is symptomatic. But they say that this virus has a, a long incubation period as well where you might not be symptomatic and still be a carrier. Yes, um, those, are the, those are kind of developing information. And um, unfortunately, um, we shed the virus even without symptoms and that period pre precedes the period of symptoms. So unfortunately, if you are, that's why the social distance is very important. So if somebody is, is here all the time in this country, and they're fine, they're probably fine. But if somebody is coming from Iran or Italy, I, sh I shouldn't mention the names though, then, then even without symptoms, we should try to keep uh, social distance. So just in case if they were in a phase before the symptoms, called pre-symptomatic phase, then we shouldn't, they're shedding the virus, and we shouldn't get it. So the most important thing is the practice, the change in lifestyle, so we should keep the social distance. Thank you very much indeed. Yes, brother. Uh, this corona virus, uh, this time, where it's different in temperature, which cause usually in the regular uh, times, use the Get the flu or get fever. So, what's the advice if I get uh, uh, this kind, even if it's not corona? Should I go to a hospital or which type of medicine should I use in order to be far, far from yeah. that area? There are, there's a very important question. I mean, uh, getting symptoms doesn't mean that you have coronavirus, there are other viruses currently uh, prevailing in the, in the population and they have not gone away. There are a couple of uh, this is the tail end of flu virus, uh, you know, that if you look at the flu virus, it's coming less, but it's still around. Yeah, another vir virus called respiratory sensitive virus is still around. There are other rhinoviruses which are around. So somebody getting symptom not necessarily means that they have coronavirus. So you need to report to the hospital or for the GP and they will um, uh, they will they will instruct give further instructions and give the uh, probably you'll be tested so they will find out which virus which of the four or five viruses prevailing in the in the atmosphere at the moment is the one which you have so that is those tests are available do you think we should isolate ourselves first uh, that, is, that is that is that is that's a lifestyle change okay. whether we have virus a b or c it's our duty not to pass it on to others. This is lifestyle change. Whether we, we cough or sneeze because of coronavirus, for God's sake, no. Or for some other virus, we have the duty not to spread it to our brothers or sisters. That should be the that should be an end of it. We should do that. 
Okay, thank you very much, and you deserve the news. Very good points, mashallah. We're planning to hopefully in the next few weeks install um, some hand sanitizer dispensers outside the masjid here, inshallah. Um, we're working with the university regarding that. Obviously, as we said, we're still discussing about Juma, so please everyone keep up to date, keep on the social media, the emails, and we'll be updating everyone with regards to um, congregational prayers and uh, Juma um, in the upcoming weeks, inshallah. And Jazakum Allah khair, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much. Thank you.